G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, we are talking about Collingwood. This is a bit of a hot topic at the moment. Reigning premiers from last year haven't had the best start to the season. And I thought rather than do a video by myself, I would get some expert opinion because as they say in the YouTube game, those who can't do, interview someone else. So I've got Anthony from the I Just Love Pies Footy YouTube channel. Anthony, how are you? Good, mate. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on board. Oh, anytime, mate. No worries. You're uh, pretty new to the YouTube content creation space. You've done some great work um, making, in particular, some Collingwood uh, content this year. And uh, interesting time to start your career, obviously, with uh, the team not going as you'd like. How have you found the content creation game so far, my friend? Yeah, you're right. Obviously, uh, I've walked into the perfect time to uh, create some content around Collingwood, uh, being 0-3, so perfect timing. But um, no, it's, it's been good uh, in a nutshell. It's a, a strong learning curve. And um, I guess it's just a matter of uh, finding uh, what, what you guys like being the, the viewers and, and going from there. So it's, it's been a good, uh, good ride so far, but angst inducing nonetheless, thanks to uh, you know, the, Collingwood, uh, the, the Collingwood boys. For sure, man, I can relate. I started an Eagles channel this year as well. Um, couldn't have started it at a lower level of <laughs> rock bottom in terms of how the club's going. Yeah. But I think there's some beauty in that because then you can, um, you can and build through the journey. And this is probably good for engagement, right? Like it's good for views when the team's going really poorly or really well. Um, but in terms of like you just being a Pies fan, man, like um, what's the vibe at the moment? How are you feeling about the Pies? I know that's probably a silly question, but I, I want to hear it in your words. Um, how do you think the boys are going? <laughs> uh, well, be, being the bubble that, that Melbourne is, obviously uh, quite angst-inducing, as I alluded to before to you, Jesse, with uh, regards to the, the vibe in Melbourne for, for Collingwood fans. And I think it stems from, I guess, the, the media really taking advantage of a, of a big uh, Victorian team not doing so well. And I'm sure you probably experienced that being in Perth with uh, with the West Coast and, and Fremantle respectively. So uh, even just watching the game against St Kilda, it felt like you could cut the tension with a knife just watching the game. And, and every mistake, there was there was a big reaction from the crowd. So yeah, a lot of anxiety from uh, yeah a player level, fan level, and, and the media are probably doing no favours, to be honest. 100%, man. I think... Um... I mean, first of all, I want to preface this by not trying to equate West Coast and Collingwood right now. Um, but there are similarities, obviously, in terms of big club uh, becomes an easy target and they're, they're being hunted right now. So I was curious as to the vibe of Collingwood fans at the moment. Um, West Coast fans, we tend to eat our own, but then it's compounded by the fact that, yeah, the media gets you know, they, they see an opportunity to target us. Like, I've never seen so much negativity about West Coast ever, I don't think. Um, and understandably. Sorry, I'm not trying to make this about West Coast. I'm on a tangent here. Uh, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just think it's it's a kind of a case of like, yeah, when, when a previously successful club uh, in West Coast and, and with Collingwood, that success is really recent. They obviously become an easy target. And I'll tell you what, I don't think I've... I forgot how many Fremantle fans they were. The Eagles become the worst team in the competition and uh, <laughs> they come out of the woodwork. Um, but in terms of as well, like you, maybe doing content creation, you and I have probably unique perspectives on the on, um, vibe of clubs and, and their support because, you know, you get some Collingwood supporters, obviously, watching your content. Um, how, how is the vibe in terms of online? Do people tend to eat each other alive? Like, what's, what's it going there? Uh, look, uh, in, in the comment section of my channel, it's obviously a, a lot of Collingwood fans that, uh, that get involved there, but it feels like uh, on a week to week basis the the, the faith uh, dissipates quite quickly in there uh, and and that's that's um, I, I think that probably plays a, a, a tributes to uh, AFL fans in general you know if your team wins one week you're on board and then if you lose the next the, the next week thereafter you're off them um, and then and you know these fans and, and Collingwood fans want instant gratification in these situations when things aren't going well but I think yeah I think um, we just need to sort of take a step back have a breath and and try and objectify what's going on and, and put a finger to it and then go from there. That's the more practical way to go about it, but we know that yeah, AFL fans are far from practical, uh, at least these days. A hundred percent, man. I do also want to uh, be clear to the audience here. I'm preempting some criticism. Again, not trying to equate the situation West Coast is in with what's happening at Collingwood, but there are obviously some similarities there. And, um, you know, it can be a aggressive and toxic place uh football fans talking online so i was curious from a from a creator point of view what your your take is on that but this season's not over it's only 0 and three um and you know maybe in some to some extent i'm also jumping on the 
bashing Collingwood uh, bandwagon right now. But uh, one thing I think I like about your channel and I strive to do with mine is trying to cut through, you know, the noise a little bit and actually talk about what we're seeing. And, and your channel is really great at the analytical side of things in particular. So um, in addition to all what we've just said, what are you able to maybe give us a little bit of insight as to what you're just seeing from the boys? Like, where do you think they're falling short? Yep. Well, firstly, thanks for the kind words. It goes a long way hearing it from one of the, the godfathers of AFL YouTube. So I'll leave that at that. But um, on to your question. So what is wrong with Collingwood right now when we really uh, get into the crux of it and sort of, uh, I guess, uh, pinpoint the, the issues? Firstly, one of the biggest issues is there are a lot of issues right now on the Collingwood field. So the first thing I want to preface in, 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 in this point that I make is that these things aren't going to be fixed overnight and they're not going to be fixed within a game or two. I think it's going to take weeks. So just a message to any existing Collingwood fans on the True Footy channel is to be patient. And, and, and just because we don't get things right, it doesn't mean we can't win games. So if we can win the games while we tick a few boxes, for example, uh, against St. Kilda, we didn't play well, but we got a big tick from players like Billy Frampton, who came in and did a job. And I think down the track, he's going to alleviate the stresses off uh, the likes of Darcy Moore once, once he finds his form. And we got ticks from players like Jamie Elliott and then Phil A. McRae over the last couple of weeks has done a job when he's come on. So those players are beneficiaries of these games despite the result. The, 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 the three issues, if I had to narrow it down furthermore to your question, I would suggest just clangers, absolute clangers, turnovers, uh, particularly in our defensive half. I think against the Sydney game, we had 28 of our 38 defensive transitions in intercepted by Sydney. And if anybody, or if you guys are privy to, to how the game is played these days, it's, it's, it's all built on uh, forward half turnovers. So if you're getting these forward half turnovers and stopping these teams from transitioning from defensive 50 to forward 50, you're likely going to win that game. So as I mentioned, clangers in the back half, inability to transition the ball uh, ties into that, Jesse, for Collingwood. Obviously, players, key players down in form, you can argue that they're, they're getting older. You're looking at players like, Sidey, um, Pendles, we got Jack Crisp, we got Jeremy Howe making very uncharacteristic uh, mistakes. So those are things that will have to be addressed and improved on as we uh, move on in the season. And then probably just an overarching, lackluster team defensive effort, whether it be someone slacking off in a defensive zone and letting Players like Wangan and Malira get that inside 45 pass into the midfield where they're breaking lines, which is what every team is looking for these days. Or whether it be a Nick Blakey, uh, who does that off the half back for GWS, a Lockie Whitfield. So these players have been tearing us up because we're probably lacking a bit of accountability, call it desire, if you will. Um, obviously, a long, long winded answer there, Jesse, but that's probably my quick take, quick take on um, where Collingwood are at right now. Long-winded is fine by me, my friend. I think you covered a lot of issues really well there. Yeah, it's interesting as well with Collingwood to add some nuance to this conversation as well. At the moment, it's all negative um, and I didn't mean this video to be that way. We also should point out, I think, you know, it's been a tough fixture, to be fair. And they've been, you know, maybe only 5% off. I don't think Collingwood's, you know, been disgraced or anything like that. It's, you know, the GWS versus Sydney was my predicted grand final this year. And so far, the, their performances have, you know, made me look a little bit better than I perhaps should at the moment. St Kilda finished top six last year. Who knows exactly how good they'll be. So Collingwood being a little bit off against those teams, those results make sense. But, you know, in terms of um, tactics, you know, that Collingwood will be hunted. With respect to clangers, you know, I mean, how much of that is, is, is tactical? Uh, other clubs exploiting, you know, potential weaknesses in the game plan, etc. But I often really do think that men the mental side of the game in footy doesn't really get talked about enough, you know. Um, you know, I think with my club, uh, how we lose a, a derby by 100 points and then roll the Western Bulldogs seven days later with virtually the same team, it just goes to show how much mentality is important. So I suppose my question is to you, like how much of what you think is happening with Collingwood just being, you know, 5% off against some really quality teams, how much of it do you think is mental? Yeah, it's, it's a good question again, Jesse. I mean, it's, it's probably one of the more immeasurable intangibles in our game uh, when we talk about mentality and desire and uh, willpower. But um, sometimes you can see it through uh, the gift that we have uh, in our eyes when we watch the game. You can see players not running 
as hard as they should be or not putting their head over the ball in, in, in situations where they have done in the past. And when you see that, it probably suggests that these players uh, are thinking that what happened last season is just going to come to them a little bit easier than it may have done in the past. And uh, maybe a, a mentality of, well, somebody else can do it for me. If, if Jack Crisp isn't going to put his head over the ball, or we talk about Dugowie's desire and, and his uh, will to, to, win, to win a contested ball and, 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 and get below his knees. He's averaging, I think, 3.7 grand ball gets for the season, whereas last season he was averaging up around the six and a half mark. And then when you look at players like Pendlebury, who's 36 years old, is averaging 6.7 grand ball gets for the season. So it just sort of just points to a veteran like Pendles still doing a job uh, mentally and, and obviously has, has, uh, has acquired that skill playing the game for so long versus a Dugowie who's just won a premiership, still relatively young in his career, has lost a bit of desire and, and, and the ground ball gets points to that to a certain extent. Tackles as well, you know, averaging three tackles a game down to 1.7 is, is another pointer suggesting that they're not really putting their 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 body on the line to win these games just yet when i th i feel like when players over 30 have a form slump the natural conclusion that everyone makes is they're done which i have often found is mm -hmm. is un is a little bit unfair to what extent do you think these some of these senior guys are, are close to the end do you think it is an age thing um my perspective uh before i let you answer is that you know sometimes i think we we make that assumption about players and we write them off over 30 but then also what might happen and this is just a working theory from a guy who didn't play afl is that when you're over 30 and you have a form slump even the player might start to have those doubts about himself you know what i mean like they're thinking oh i've been shit for three weeks oh i'm not quite uh, going as hard as i used to am i done and then i think that thought is ultimately might what uh, might be what it signals the end for them but how, how close to the end do you think some of these veterans are? Like how uh, I think he's out of contract. Side bottoms out of contract. Pendlebury, thirty six and out of contract. Uh, where do you see the, these guys? Well, I guess yeah. Regarding the likes of Sadi, Pendles, Howe, and and maybe even Tom Mitchell, if we want to throw him in there, and and maybe I start with the Tom Mitchell and compare him mm -hmm. against a player like a like a Howie or a Pendles or a Sadi. I think Tom Mitchell is a player who's little bit in trouble as far as what his uh, future looks like in the AFL, just because I think he can only play the one position. He's, he's good within the contest, but once the ball extends outside of that contest, it looks like the game is running past him a little bit too easily. He still works hard, but he just can't keep up with the speed of the game, uh, matching up against these, these quick players in the midfield. So for someone like Tom Mitchell, I don't know how many lives he's got left in the Collingwood team. I know uh, Craig McRae said he's going to keep faith in his team, which probably points towards Tom Mitchell getting another game this weekend. I could be wrong. But then we, we look at, he, uh, I guess, his profile versus a, a Jeremy Howe, who, yes, is out of form and is... Like, I guess, very badly out of form at the moment, is someone who, if backline isn't working for him, he could go forward. So he has that opportunity, whereas if, if the backline is not working and Nathan Murphy comes in, maybe Howe goes forward. With Pendles, maybe he could play halfback. There is that question, but I think he's still got a bit of life in the midfield. I just don't think Pendles and Mitchell can play in the same team together at the same time, given their lack of speed and acceleration. And then Asadi probably has a little bit more life in him, and I think he has a bit of a grace period. He's played so well over the course of his career. He's had a, a bad patch, and if it's if it's not wing, then maybe he can play forward pocket um, later down in his career. But that's where I see some of the more older players for Collingwood right now. Yeah, well said, mate. And I do think, you know, I think there's often calls for coach to swing the axe and create disruption in the team and sometimes that's justified i do also fear sometimes that can make the team too disjointed and exposed so i think just i'm just saying that there's a downside there but in terms of you know what's outside the team obviously there's been calls for players maybe to be dropped um but i am you know a little bit ignorant as to who comes in we know finley mccray started as the sub last week if i'm not mistaken but maybe maybe who are some of the guys outside the 22 do you think could potentially come in and help improve this team? Is there anyone uh, perhaps we don't know about? So I guess as far as players knocking on the door right now, we're probably looking at players like John Noble to come in. If if Howie is 
um, to be dropped. I think Noble is a likely replacement on the wing. Uh, Noble is actually not the oldest player. He's only like 26, 27. So there is a bit of uh, a future for him at Collingwood as far as the long term is concerned. We've got Harry Dimitia who came out of the 22, uh, the 2023 draft. However, had a finger tendon issue early in the preseason. So he would be someone who may have had an opportunity right now had he not been injured. Outside of that, we've got Ed Allen knocking on the door, who's a big-bodied midfielder who can bring the ball from inside to out. Also, keep a tab on Tujath. He is the brother of CJ from Hawthorne. Um, our list manager, Derek Hine, had suggested that TJ was ahead of where CJ's progression was when they were both 18. And uh, just coming off uh, TJ's last couple games in the VFL, albeit pre-seasons and the first round of the VFL, some good things have come out of his game. A lot of leadership being displayed and great run off halfback. So a couple players there. Obviously, Reef McInnes uh, recently been put into the team as well. That was someone who I was big on going into the season. And he's looked to have taken his opportunity, kicking three goals against St. Kilda. So those are some of my players that I'm keeping an eye on in the VFL and, and some of them who have obviously just made a move into the AFL just recently against St. Kilda. Well said, mate. I had similar thoughts about both Reef and uh, Giath as well. Uh, I liked him in his draft, and I think Collingwood did particularly well with that pick. Uh, before we go, I just want to ask, I'm going to put you on the spot as a, as a Pies fan. How confident are you that the Pies can turn this around and you know potentially play finals? And what are your thoughts ahead of the Brisbane game? Okay. Yes, on the spot indeed. Um, what do I think? Well, I think we can turn it around. What does that mean? Turning it around for me is, as I mentioned very early in this video, that we, we tick some boxes along the way and we get wins while we're at it. So while we're not performing at our best and at our peak, which which is fine early in the season if you're not 0-3, but we are, and we're going up against the, the grand, uh, a grand finalist in Brisbane. So not ideal situation to not be at our best, but I think if we can just squeeze in these wins against the likes of the Brisbane and Hawthorne, I think we're having it for gather around. We'll see us 2-3 and three before our bye, I believe. That will put us in good stead for the rest of the season. And then we can start, I guess, flirting with the idea of top four again while we tick boxes uh, on an individual level and a, and a team performance standpoint as well. So there is faith. And um, I think there's there's reason to believe that Colin can still make the finals and, and who knows, top four might be a reality still as well. Well said, mate. I think uh, you think you can't discount this pie side entirely. I mean, I feel like... There could be a team that finished 6th or 7th and still give it a red-hot crack in the uh, last few weeks of September. Uh, look, this has been unreal. I've been really glad that we did this, mate. Uh, it's been great to get some insight into the pies and show some people uh, what you and your content is about. Um, before we go, why don't you just tell people where they can find you and maybe to what to expect on your YouTube channel. Yeah, well, you guys can find me first and foremost on YouTube. My main channel is I Just Love Pies Footy. And that content is obviously made for the diehard Collingwood fan. And if you feel like you fit that profile, then consider having a look at my channel. And then from there, you can look at my Instagram where, I, where I'm posting uh, daily reels on uh, more specifically video analysis. And you can also find me on YouTube. The, the handle there is I Just Love Footy. And uh, I post content varying from video analysis to game previews, match reviews, and, and everything else in between. So have a look. And if, if, if you like me enough, maybe consider subscribing. We can go from there. Awesome. Thanks, mates. Really appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, this has been True Footy. And uh, like I said, we can, you can find Anthony's uh, channel details in the description of this video. But for now, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you in the next one.